stalled uh, over the past several days. He will be spending uh, some time at the forward end of Kibo, uh, removing some thermal insulation from the wrist and elbow camera on the 33-foot-long Japanese robotic arm that was tested for the first time and moved, uh, two joints of which were moved uh, for the first time yesterday. As Fossum works on the uh, removal of the thermal covers, this uh, thermal insulation from uh, the wrist and elbow cameras on the Japanese robotic arm, Ron Guerin uh, has hooked up quick disconnects, fluid lines from the, nit from the new nitrogen tank assembly that was installed in the S-1 truss to the adjacent ammonia tank assembly. The nitrogen used to pressure the ammonia tank so that uh, coolant can flow through the truss uh, to make sure that all the avionics and systems in the truss are properly thermally conditioned. Okay. Hey, Ronnie, you're looking great out there, man. Where are you at? I'm going to need this JFP. Hey. <laughs> the view of Mike Fossum working on the end of the new Kibo laboratory, getting packed up to go out and help Baron, Ron Guerin with the camera installation on the station's port truss. The view from Mission Specialist Ron Guerin's helmet camera as he is working on the camera installation on the port truss. First, he has to remove a dummy box that he and Fossum installed during the second EVA as a placeholder for that camera. Ron Guerin decided he has the installation of the camera on the port truss under control and doesn't need Mike Fossum to come out and help, so Mike. Fossum is going instead to the airlock to get ready for another get-ahead task. They'll be installing some thermal covers on some quick disconnects on the station's harmony node. Okay. Uh, next is a tool inventory, a glove check. Uh, bag up the larger U bag and head out. All right, that's the work. Teams in the Space Shuttle Flight Control Room say that the camera is moving and now producing good video. Here's a view from this is the camera that Ron Guerin just finished reinstalling after it was repaired yesterday. A new power supply was added to it to, to replace a failed one after Garen and Fossum removed the camera during the second spacewalk of the mission. Garen's now going to head to the Harmony Node station where Fossum's already working on installing the thermal blankets on quick disconnects there. Ron, we have a good checkout. We have a good image and we've got good pan and tilt. Nice work.
Okay, there's a little gap at the bottom of this one. If, uh, if, if zero gap is the requirement, I can adjust. Yeah, that's that. Yeah, like I was thinking more we'll about it here. We don't want from the keep. other side, which may be difficult for you. There's a little twist in the MLI so that the silver is shown. Yeah. Okay. I'll get and, and I don't know if that's a problem or not. Copy. And Houston, uh, I'll describe it to you. On the uh, the far side of the QD area, uh, there's a little twist in the very end of the MLI so that the silver is showing out. Uh, is that okay? Never mind all that. Mike just fixed it. Okay, we we see the Never fix mind. there. The real question is if the QD is showing. Yeah, there's a uh, not a, over there. It, it looks real good over on the uh, the mater side. Uh, that looks great, Mike. You can press on. Get everything packed in here. This is a view from Mission Specialist Mike Fossum's helmet camera as he's at the Quest airlock getting packed up now that he's finished his task and several more that weren't scheduled for this spacewalk. Station and shuttle are about 220 miles above the Southern Ocean right now and heading toward New Zealand and the orbital sunrise for this orbit. Copy that. Take your time. I'm ready to release yours. You're pending? I am pending it, yes. As you can see, Mission Specialist Ron Garen's made it back to the airlock and is getting ready to head in. The spacewalk is now been going on for 6 hours and 13 minutes, scheduled to go 6 hours and 20 minutes. Okay,